Hello friends, uh, in this video I want to show you how to make a rotating tumbler for grinding or polishing just using scrap, mainly spare parts from uh, printers and other household appliances. The main structure or frame of the tumbler uh, comes from the inner frame of a printer, but not all inner frames of printers are the same. Many small printers have a staircase uh, structure in them and they are not useful just like this one this frame leaves us very little space for putting a pair of big rollers and a motor and it can topple over very easily the ideal in a frame of a printer is box like square on all sides there are different sizes depending on the model of printer and some are made of sheet metal or, and others are made of plastic. As the tumbler vibrates a lot, I prefer a plastic one. But even a plastic one, very strong plastic, uh, they make a lot of noise. The one I chose is a plastic frame belonging to a HP LaserJet 1100. The HP LaserJet uh, P3015 has a metal structure, a box-like metal structure, uh, which is a bit bigger than the 1100 and is quite sturdy. This is an HP LaserJet printer P3015. The other material which I have used to make my tumbler is the following. Rollers taken off other printers. Ideally they should have a big diameter and have a rubber sleeve over them to help in turning the, the bottle or cylinder. A round shaft with a round wheel simply can slip under tension. A shaft with a cutout is a better option for driving a pulley or sheave. If the sheave fits snugly on it and has a pairing cut out on it. Or, like in this case, it has a bolt that holds it on there firmly in the cutout. But it is important that the hole of the sheave should match perfectly with the diameter of the shaft. If it doesn't, we'll see the following situation here. As you can see there, it doesn't fit, so the, the center point there is different. The shaft has a center point, and the wheel has a different center point, so while this one turns, this other one will be jumping up and down while moving, and that will produce a problem in our system. And that can damage both the motor and the transmission parts, like in this case. Ball bearings. Ideally, these rollers should have ball bearings holding them onto the frame. This will reduce the friction and help the motor deliver all its power. Don't use sleeve bearings for the shafts. You can find these small ball bearings in fans, vacuum cleaners, and most electric motors. Spacers, just like ball bearings, these can be found in many motors and will be useful in avoiding the lateral movements that can occur when these rollers don't fit in with the width of the frame. Usually the inner frame we chose will not fit the rollers, so we will have to put spaces between the rubber part and the ball bearing so the rubber doesn't touch the stationary parts. If the shaft of the roller brings snap rings or pins to hold it in place, you may be able to uh, adapt it to the, the frame to hold it in place. You might not have to use spacers. Ball bearing plates. These a ball bearing place that I've taken off um, vacuum cleaner and a ball bearing fits in there perfectly. 
And with these plates, as you can see here, I have fitted them onto the, the frame and they're holding on both sides, they hold the, the shafts, the rollers, snugly and very little movements sideways or in any direction. This reduces the amount of vibration that occurs in the tumbler. The motors. I have tried many different motors from fruit processors, hand mixers and others. But the best are these little direct current motors from printers. These are big in size compared to others and they run on 12 volts with a transformer. So the cost of energy for a machine that has to run for hours on end is very low. I have not found any alternating current motor with less than 100 watts and 100 watts is too much for my economy. These little motors from printers, at least the bigger ones, are very strong and with the right transmission elements can be very efficient. As you will see, on off switches, wiring and connectors. All these you will find in printers and other electronic appliances. You might even find these counters that one can adapt in some way to see how many turns a minute we have in our tumbler. I haven't connected it yet but maybe I will later on. Drive mechanism. The most simple drive mechanism is a flexible drive belt that connects the driving sheave or pulley on the motor to the driven sheave or pulley on the main roller. Ideally, the drive belt should be cogged, like this one. However, this forces an exact fit between cog belt and cog wheels or gear. With a drive belt, there must be permanent tension on the belt or it will slip. This reduces efficiency and limits the amount of power it can deliver. Also, the length of whatever belts we find shall define the separation between the motor and the rollers and this can be a limiting factor producing many headaches. If a belt is too long we can add a spinning wheel halfway down the, the length of the, the belt without increasing the friction too much. Flat belts and cock belts need to be perfectly aligned While this might not be a big problem for uh, V belts and uh, round belts like this one, uh, it is really a big issue with uh, the other kind of belts, the flat belts or cog belts. A gear drive, something like this, where you have many gears, one in the motor and then growing different sizes to the, the shaft of the roller is a very good option but it is practically impossible to find the precise combination of gears and shafts you'll need in different uh, appliances. You have to practically create the, the gear box yourself adapted to your needs. And that, in my opinion, is too much work. You'll also need some bolts, washers and nuts and other little things to hold everything together. And all that can be found in different appliances, including printers. Mill jar or cylinder. My mill jar for grinding is an old thick-walled extinguisher. I cut off the nozzle just the right size for a laboratory cork. This cork has some holes, holes in it and I put a plastic there for the dust not to come out while I'm milling. The inside of the, 
of the jaw has a mechanism there to drag the iron balls around, lifting them and making them fall onto the material that has to be ground. And I must say, it is not easy to get nuts and bolts in there to hold that element in place. The grinding balls were taken out of oversized ball bearings. And these really are quite small. They could be even bigger for this jar. For the polishing mill, I am using a plastic jar that has a sealed cover. Polishing media is something you will have to buy. Uh, you can, you can uh, practice a bit, uh, try it out with, with sand, different uh, grades of sand, but uh, polishing uh, jewelry and so on and stones requires special materials. Now, both the polishing cylinder and the grinding cylinder have to be lined with two rings of rubber around both ends. One over here, another one over here. That is to create enough friction between the cylinder and the rollers. Because it, if you don't do that, it will tend to slip. It, this is kind of heavy, and even still, it tends to slip when the rollers are turning. The same with this one. I'm here. I'm just using a rubber band, but uh, the idea is to have something like like these. And finally, you have to create a mechanism like this one here. Here I've got a ball bearing that stops uh, the the jar from falling against the wall of the tumbler where it might get caught up with anything that is protruding there, a bolt, a bit of plastic or anything, and which will, might stop it from turning or even get caught on it and, and make it jump off the, the tumbler. These are the materials with which I have built this tumbler. As far as I know, they cost me zero. Now, let's see it work. There were the polishing media. It probably would go much better if I had two rings of rubber, one on each end. I only have one, so it probably slips a bit. The same with this case. And as you see, it's quite noisy, and uh, it should go on like that for hours. So, it is a good idea to make a box around it with some method to bring the noise down to a level which is tolerable. Or put your tumbler outside in the in the backyard where no one will will hear it well i hope you like this this video i hope you like my tumbler and it gives you some ideas of what you can do with many spare parts of printers and other appliances and please if you like this video give it thumbs up share it Comment anything you want to say, any questions you have, put them down in the comments below. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. I will be very grateful if you all just subscribe here. And uh, I'll be put, posting more videos later on. And uh, click on the bell if you want to receive notifications for new videos. So. Thanks for watching.